Welcome to my Office Scripts Hi-Fi video. Uh, excuse the hat, it's a bad hair day. Now, this is just a, a glance into Office Scripts preview release. Uh, now, it's July 20th, 2020 at the moment. Uh, I'm putting that out there because uh, if you're watching this six months from uh, that date or later, chances are this is going to be a bit bare bones looking. Um, if you're not familiar with Office Scripts, Microsoft released this in January of 2020, but it did not hit my tenancy until March. Uh, and of course, the global COVID lockdown uh, kicked in around then, and things have been a bit hectic. So apologies for the delay. For now, I'm just going to show you how to enable Office Scripts, how to record an action, which is a script equivalent to a macro. Uh, and then I'm going to rip it apart and brief over the makeup of the keywords and objects. So let's do an early dissection, shall we? Take the hat off. Don't look. Okay, so Microsoft did state um, that this Office Scripts is only available to E3 and E5 licenses. Now, at the time that I recorded this video, which is again uh, July 2020, um, I've been using it in my Office 365 Business Standard uh, license. So I've tested it in that and it still works quite lovely. If Office Scripts is enabled, you will see an Automate tab sitting in your Excel Online. Enabling Office Scripts is quick, but the first time you enable this to your tenancy, it can take up to 48 hours before you see it. Now, when I enabled it, it was immediate. Now, at first glance, the Automate tab looks empty and devoid of the features we're used to seeing in the VBA Developer tab. You have a button to record an action, edit script, and a drop down to provide sample scripts. Besides tools such as controls, add ins, and XML features, the one that stood out for me was the absence to record your actions using relative references. So when you record an action, the range references are recorded absolute. My example action I recorded was to copy a range of data from a request sheet and paste the values only and transpose the data. Uh, at the bottom of my list in the list sheet. However, you can only choose one element to paste. You can tweak the script afterwards once you've understood the copy from and its arguments. It did pick up common Excel navigation and selection keyboard shortcuts such as the control arrow to go to the end of a consecutive range. But again, the cell you end up on is recorded absolute. Using Excel tables for your list of data is always encouraged where possible, and this will make life easier when appending data into new rows using scripts, or even inserting and deleting rows. Unlike VBA macros, you record your actions first, then enter a name and description at the end. This is handy if you make a mistake and you need to record from scratch. You don't have to delete the original name in order to use it again. At first glance, this is very much JavaScript as we know it. Microsoft have not done any do it our way keywords. They've stuck to the open source. So if you're familiar with JavaScript, Google scripts or similar, you should be in your comfort zone here. If you're used to Visual Basic Script or Visual Basic for applications, then adapting to JavaScript syntax will take some getting used to. But most of the logic, looping, variable declaration is there. And with a bit of time, you can pick up as you go the variances. Like Excel VBA, the recording only takes what it captures you doing, but not the context or the method of means. So much of the code could be a lot simpler. And again, like VBA, you'll end up recording actions to merely learn how to do new things in code or create the base code quickly for you to tweak later. So nothing new there. As for the objects in black characters, well, they will be a natural learning curve, especially VBA developers who are used to working with the Excel class hierarchy in VBA. You'll be using methods or object functions in place of property manipulation for most of your work, and that can take a little bit of getting used to. Eventually, you'll have a great code in the palm of your hands or a couple of ibuprofen. If you script often, especially in free tools like Notepad++, then online scripts by comparison is quite thin on tools and functionality to help you along. The Excel Online ribbon offers virtually no functionality across to the script editor. So what you have is within the pane only. Besides the IntelliSense pop-up tool, which is kind of expected in languages nowadays, the most 
basic of functionality looks like it's missing such as undo redo find and replace but these features are here but only available by the way of common keyboard shortcuts so in windows i can use ctrl z or z for undo ctrl y or shift ctrl z for redo or repeat and ctrl f for find but sadly no replace command that i can see in terms of the environmental editing tools, you can change the script's appearance using the office themes, change the font face and size, you can also change the style of wrapping and the number of characters uh, when using the tab key to indent code. But I'm sure more functionality will come in time. One very nice feature is the logs panel that appears at the bottom. It captures outputs that you can send for testing variables or checking data and a problem tab that identifies errors with the code syntax immediately. You do not have to save the script or run a test option. Each problem identifies the line number and the character number where the error is detected. However, although you can see the line numbers in the script editor, there is no sign of the character position of your cursor. So for now, you'll just have to count along to character 132 on a statement to find where the issue starts. A lot of the common Excel workbook objects are provided here, but remember only the objects that work in Excel Online are going to be available. So knowing what is available is key before attempting anything in code. One very excellent feature is the ability to run scripts from Power Automate and pass parameters through to the script. This would be an excellent opportunity to replace the classic SharePoint list sync service with a better way to synchronize SharePoint and Excel to meet your needs. And that includes that wacky few who still want to use the two-way synchronization. Whatever your perks are will try and meet your needs. All in all, even despite the fact it's preview, there are limited perks and features. I'm happy with what they've provided in this preview of Office Scripts and with the feedback from those testing it out, I believe Microsoft will have something really good to offer us in the future. Well, I hope that little insight was helpful to you and hopefully I might get an opportunity to show you the lowdown on how to work with the current Excel objects. In the meantime, I have a few more uh, preview videos in the pipeline, including a look at Microsoft Fluid, what it is and what to expect from it in the future. Please subscribe to my channel so you can be informed as and when uh, I release videos in the future. And as always, I'll be looking on my social media connections for any questions or any recommendations you have. Thanks again, stay safe and have fun.